Welcome back, Awaken Intuitives, and welcome to any new Awaken Intuitives. Natalie here. Well, we are back this time to do a prediction reading on the month of October 2023. So we're just going to go with the flow like we did for last month for September. That was a very interesting reading and to see what played out. There was a, some things that a, lined up pretty good. Um, so I'm excited to do this one because I know there's a lot going on. We just had the fourth super moon on the last couple days of September. And uh, this month we're going to be seeing a solar eclipse and the new moon. We're very close together on the same day, um, depending on your location. And then we're going to see a lunar eclipse at the end of the month. So that'll be really interesting. A big, big month, big changes. So let's begin. I do have some gate to oneness music playing in the background frequency that I do not own the rights to. And we are going to pull some or do the singing bowl, pull some general energetic messages, then begin with the reading. Like I said, we're just going to go with the flow. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Reach out if you're interested in a free personal reading. You can comment below or you can find my email in the description below. And all timestamps will be in the description below. I don't think I'm going to have very many of them. So probably just for the singing bowl and the general energetic messages in the reading. So it'll be simple and... Um, Thank you so much for being here, okay? If you have any uh, feelings, intuition of what may happen this month, put it in the comments below. Uh, that'd be awesome, okay? So, all for entertainment purposes only. Truth is always stranger than fiction. Always have an open mind. Always ask questions. And let's begin. Unconditional love and light, so be it. So, we're going to do the singing bowl for the higher heart chakra, okay? And um, this is to hone into that frequency of unconditional love of light and center um uh kind of ground but also connect to divine source like creator universe calling that of uh, those vibrations and frequencies of love and um connect with our hearts okay so i will count down from three i'll ding it three times sing it ding it one last time so if this is loud maybe you want to turn it down for a moment just for a little bit okay all right Three, two, one. Wow. I think that is the loudest I have ever done that thing. <laughs> wow. Okay. Now let's begin with our general energetic messages. All of the decks I use in this reading and video will be in the description below. And I will tell you, these are the angel wisdom cards. And I always start out with these three decks. Um, we always ask I always ask divine source light creator and guides of love and light only to guide me no matter what. All right. So can we start with a general energetic message? And we are focusing on the month of October, 2023, just the month of October of 2023. We have acknowledgement. Look after yourself by acknowledging your desires and needs and taking steps to meet them. Examine and note your gifts, talents, and achievements. Perfect time for that. Okay, this is the harvest time. So when you accept all aspects of yourself, you feel centered and confident. Then you can genuinely acknowledge others. Become aware of and nurture the good qualities of the people in your life so that they feel relaxed and happy in your presence. Angel wisdom reminds you to recognize who you truly are an evolved spirit in a human body. When you acknowledge your spiritual dimensions, you will align with your true self and your spirit will soar. Affirmation is, 
I acknowledge who I truly am. Wow. So a time um, this month is really um, recognizing and acknowledging how far we've come, all the achievements, um, who we truly are, our authentic selves, um, introspection, reflection time. Perfect. Okay, so there's that. All right, we'll set that right up here. And now from, oh, there we go. Now from the Awakened Dreamer Oracle. Okay, Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Love and Light Only. Can we get another one from the Awakened Dreamer Oracle? General energetic message for the month of October, 2023. Today for me is the 2nd of October. Okay. Ooh. Okay, we'll take him. Very interesting. The first one is a river of bliss. Running just beneath the drama on the surface is a river of never-ending bliss. Consider this your permission slip to dip your toe or dive in head first into this sacred swirl that leads you back to the shore of joyous nature. Wow. You know, what stands out is the beneath the surface, the drama, okay? A lot of that's going on. And then um, diving head first into bliss. And, okay, that's really interesting. We'll keep that in mind. The river, the flow. All right, and then we have Attuned to Dream Life FM frequencies, okay? Imagine the way you'll feel once your greatest dreams are realized. Now amplify that feeling. Expand it out through your eyes and heart. Program this vibration the way you would a car radio dial. So Dream Life FM is always at your fingertips. We had the toes head first. Singing through the air waves. Elevating you to a higher and higher frequency. You know what this reminds me of? We uh, are having in the United States the um, that FEMA broadcast frequency test signal that is going to go to each smart device. Um, that's it. That's what that reminds me of. The airwaves, the frequency, the radio dial. What? Okay, so this is telling me we need to be mindful of keeping our vibration high, especially during that time, because I feel like that's a low vibration and a low frequency when they're going to be doing that. Okay, it says the rapture of remembering. Call to mind your favorite nighttime dream. Dream Life FM. What? Take a swim, River of Bliss in the dream stream and get drenched in its soulful potency. Carry droplets of the dream back onto the dry land of your waking reality as you embody its energy and infuse its vibrancy. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is so interesting. Okay, last one, we're gonna pull from the Shaman Wisdom cards. Okay, Divine Source Light Creator Guides of Love and Light can we get one last general energetic message for the month of October, 2023. General energetic message, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, we have a card number seven. Well, the seventh house in astrology is ruled by Libra. It says Libra on here as well. Um, it is the scales. It's about relationships, partnerships, unions, how to balance clarity, right? It says hunting moon, Libra baskets an adult. We are in Libra season right now. Okay. So let's read this out of the guidebook. It is short, simple, straight to the point. All right. It says September 23rd to October 23rd. So 23, 23 or five, five. And that would be a 10 reduced to a one. Fives is all about changes and transformations and cycles. It can be challenges. 
Okay, a 10 is a fulfillment, success, completion, cycles as well. Things ending for new beginnings, a full circle. And then the 10 can be reduced to one new beginnings, new seeds, new cycles, new journeys. Wow, that sticks out a lot. So it says, I am hunting moon. I am the preparation for the coming winter. It, this is perfect. What? Okay, I think the next full moon is the hunting moon. Nope. It would have been this last one. It would have been this last one. It was called the harvest moon, but I believe it's the same as this hunting moon. That makes sense. September 23rd to October 23rd. That is absolutely correct. Yes. Okay. I'm here to remind you to prepare your house and put it in order. You must be mindful of relationships, be they partnerships, contracts, unions, or marriages. Things are not what they appear to be. There are times in relationships that it is best not to say anything, but to hear what is being said. Listen closely. Now is the time to consider your artistic side and create something of beauty and give it away. I provide strength for your hunt, your quest. Wow, birds may be coming up a lot. Uh, maybe crows, ravens, Libra baskets, adult. Very interesting. Okay, relationships, acknowledgement, frequencies, vibrations, who you connect with, who you connect to. All right, so that's going to be it for the general energetic messages. Now we're going to get a tarot deck out and begin the reading. So we are going to start off with this one. Okay. And like I said, we're just going to go with the flow. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's begin. We have the Comedic Tarot. And um, again, all this is for entertainment purposes only. Um, truth is always stranger than fiction. Okay, always have an open mind and always ask questions. So this is um, predicting possible predictions on the month of October, 2023. The reason why it's always a potential, always a possible is because everybody has free will, anything can change, okay? And um, dates are just the same. Like there's nothing really ever set in stone, uh, especially with tarot, reading, um, time frame, time frame. okay? This is just what things are looking like at this moment right now, of what the potential is going to be. So keep that in mind with tarot, okay? And readings and predictions and things like that, okay? So Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Love and Light Only, let's begin by asking about the first week of October. Like I said, today for me is the 2nd of October. But let's, we did get the number seven, Libra season, which we are in Libra season. But the first week of October, what can we expect Ooh, that was quick. No way. Seven of Cups. Seven. Seventh house, Libra. We're in Libra season. That is Libra season, the first week of October. Um, partly. The Cups of Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. It's water. We did get the river, right? And then um, it says Lord of Illusionary Success. So the Seven of Cups is multiple opportunities. Um, it can be multiple things going on. Um, multiple offers opportunities um feelings emotions multiple like intuitions um a lot going on and it can cause confusion okay and this can be like your dreams we do get the dream life fm um it can be like your head in the clouds um people are seem a bit foggy right now okay um they seem kind of like up in the clouds, um, not really grounded, a bit foggy in the mind. So that's a lot of what the Seven of Cups is, okay? There is a Venus symbol here and a Scorpio symbol here. Scorpio rules the eighth house of changes, transformations, death, rebirth. Venus is about love and can be relationships. A lot of changes in relationships and a lot of confusion, a lot of fogginess, a lot of fantasy type world stuff going on okay you know what let's go back and forth between tarot and oracle let's see here 
Um, let's do the messenger oracle. So we're talking about the first week of October, 2023. Um, and 2023 adds up to number seven. So we are in the year of the seven. And look at that. This is the cover of the book Raven Falan chose. This is a messenger oracle. It says, be honest. Look at the third eye. And look at the water pouring out of her eyes and her mouth. Water, feelings, emotions. Third eye, seeing, intuition. Hmm. And then be honest. We did get um, acknowledgement. It's like your true self. We got that. Okay, so um, what else do we need to know about the first week of October? What message do we need to remember and acknowledge? Show that you care. Hmm, that goes pretty well with the general energetic messages. Show that you care. Okay, on page 60, it says, look at the white dragon. Hmm. Do not distance yourself from life and those around you. Reach out. Ask for help or support if you have need. Okay. Or if someone within your circle is in need of care and support, then give it without hesitation or question. A troubled share, a trouble shared is a burden halved. Wow. Now is not the time to withdraw and be alone, nor is it time to leave another in need. Be aware, be caring, be compassionate, reach out and be a friend and allow others to be a friend to you. Wow. That is really interesting. Um, the relationships is very important. Being there for each other, supporting each other. Um, it is important to have healthy boundaries. That is on page 60. So 60 can be reduced to a six. The sixth house in astrology is... Ooh, the wind ruled by Virgo, which the sixth house represents health, wellness, the body, daily routines that can include work, um, boundaries and organization, which we got in the general energetic messages. So it's important to organize. It's important to have healthy boundaries, healthy relationships. Okay. For positive, good, healthy wellness, right? in your daily routines. Very important for the first week of October. So why is this? Why do we need to focus on our relationships in the first week of October? October is a lot of Libra or we're in Libra season. This first week of October is in Libra season. It's about relationships, partnerships, marriages, uh, unions, uh, harmony, about balancing. So, um, why why do we need to focus on this for our relationships seven of pentacles are you kidding another seven it's because it's in libra season it is the first seven days first week of october that's wild libra rules the seventh house of relationships partnerships balance and it says lord of success unfulfilled the seven of pentacles is earthy. Um, it is planting new seeds. Um, it is what seeds you have planted though as well. It's like setting these intentions, setting and planting these new seeds um, or the seeds you have planted and the care and nurture that you're putting into it. How perfect, right? Nurture, care, um, not just caring for yourself, but caring for others. And this is the work you're doing in taking care of those seeds so they can grow really uh, root, get grounded, grow them strong roots, and then reach the fruit, right? The harvest time. Wow. Okay, so this may be connected to what you want to achieve what you desire okay the seeds you've planted what you've started in the past maybe even just these newer seeds you planted and the care and nurture you put into it because you want to reach those dreams and those goals and achievements okay that's why it's about reaching your desires reaching your accomplishments okay that's so funny 
Well, so this seems to be personal type our personal relationships. Okay. And that's how it started out with. So now, um, can we expect anything, um, any type of news, um, not just in our individual lives, but I want to know like society, um, can we expect anything as any kind of news the first week of, of October as a society, as humanity. Whoop. Five of pentacles. Wow. This can be my winter card. This usually is the winter card. We are moving into winter soon. Um, five is all about changes and transformations. The pentacles is anything earthy. So it says Lord of material trouble. So this can be financial loss. It can be divorce, separation. It can be feeling left out in the cold or removing yourself um, from situations. Um, keeping yourself out in the cold. Isolation. Financial loss. Material loss. Feeling any kind of loss. It can be separation. It can be... Okay, is society being left out in the cold with finances and materials? Is this society, society being left out in the cold, uh, having separation and um, financial troubles um, in the first week of October? Nine of Wands. Okay, so here's the Five of Pentacles. got a lot of Taurus symbols there. Taurus is the um, sign that rules the second house in astrology. It's anything with the earthly plane, earthly world, the reality. And Nine of Wands is my Sagittarius card, a Lord of Great Strength. The Nine of Wands, though, is a wounded warrior. It's getting knocked down over and over and over again, but standing back up. And it's also taking action to build up a wall to protect how far you've come, to protect everything you've built. So it's about protecting all the things you have achieved. It could be homes. It can be a vehicle. It can be your financial gain, uh, what you've accomplished. Um, it can be a job, a career. It can be savings. Um, the things you've accomplished on the 3D earth, 3D plant in this lifetime. Okay. So you're going to be very protecting of it, protective of it. We're going to... It seems we're going to do our best to be warriors, do, to be our own warriors and protect everything we've worked hard for and everything we've built, okay? Wow. All right, I'm gonna get another Oracle and let's see. We should do the wild unknown archetypes see what is unknown that may come to light in the first week of october to us okay i just gotta find out where i put that let's see no no right here okay wild unknown archetypes Okay, so what is unknown to us um, that we can be aware of for the first week of October 2023? What is unknown to us for the first week of October that we can figure out and be aware of? As a society, as humanity, as a community, whoa. Okay, we have Kar Karos, there's an eye, it is blue. The eye does remind me of the third eye we were seeing earlier, right? Um, we're still focused on the first week of October. Okay, I cannot fix those right now. Um, the blue, it does remind me of the throat chakra. The throat chakra is speaking truth, authenticity, uh, speaking up, but this is us seeing 
we were just asking what is unaware of us that we can become aware of for the first week of October as a community, as society. Wow. So this is going to be way back here. Um, right here. Kairos. Kairos. All right. Here we go. It says mythic time and synchronicity. Alignment, ease in decisions and actions. It says the word evil comes from the root unripe. Consider that everything has a time of ripeness when it becomes a nourishing fruit, sweet to the lips. We were talking about planting those seeds, the seeds we planted, the care and nurture we put into it so we can bear the fruit, our, reach our goals and achievements. Okay. Compare the Greek words chronos and kairos. This will guide you to an understanding of logos and mythos. All right, here we go. We, we have all had the experience of timelessness, of life beyond the ticking of the clock. Oh, it may be felt as time standing still, slow motion, or losing track of time on a walk or in a lovely conversation. So this time of fall is the time to slow down. There's going to be a standstill, okay? Now... This is known as mythic time, and it is the territory of Kairos. This card suggests there is a secondary time continuum that goes beyond any earthly clocks and schedules. Wow. Within this non-linear realm, we access divine timing. A single moment ripens with auspiciousness, and our actions change the trajectory of our whole life. Time becomes a living thing that watches over us and tells us precisely when to speak or act. When this card appears, it is all about patience and precision. No clock can guide you. Wait for the rush of inner knowing and not a moment longer. It says, going deeper, Felix, Gonzalez, Torres, Untitled, Perfect Lovers. Wow. Something about time. Time is going to seem to be slowed down. It's going to be like a standstill. Um... Okay. All right. So, um, very interesting. Well, how is the planet? Let's ask how mother earth is for the first week of October of 2023. How is mother earth Gaia? Six of cups. What? Six of Cups, it says Lord of Pleasure. Okay, we have Scorpio energy here. Um, this is water energy, the Six of Cups. Six of Cups is like memories. The past. Childhood. Somebody or something you've known for a long time. Your roots, ancestors, lineage. Generational. Six of Cups. I feel like I feel like the Mother Earth is very connected to the children at this time, the first week of October of the planet. And she's doing something for them. Like she's filling their cups. Is Mother Earth Gaia focused very strongly on Earth's children at this time? Seven of Wands. Are you kidding? Seven again. So here's the Six of Cups. So the Seven of Wands is fire energy. It says Lord of Valor. And we have a true North, true node symbol here. And then we have a Mars symbol. Mars can be battle, war, struggle, conflict, tug of wars. Um, true North, true, true North, true node. Uh, it's like life mission, life purpose, authenticity. Okay. The seven of wands is divine protection. It is actually taking an action to build, or sorry, to, yes, it's taking an action to create a bubble of protection. It is defensive. It is standing up and being a warrior, fighting back. Wow. That is very interesting with Mother Earth. Gaia. 
protecting. Very strongly. Okay, so um, I want to go on to the Unveiling the Golden Age Tarot. I call it an oracle as well. Um, and then we will also use Spiderweb Tarot. <laughs> okay, so what's the last message that we can be aware of? Anything we may need to know um, for the first week of October so we can move on, okay? Anything else we need to know for the month, uh, sorry, for the first week of October 2023? Anything else we can be aware of? Try that again. Uh, maybe not. Do we need to use a spider web tarot? Let's try it. Okay, spider web tarot. Woo! Is there anything else, Divine Source Light Creator Guides of Love and Light Only, that we can be aware of for the first week of October 2023? The first week. Within this first week of October 2023. Is there anything else? Hmm. Anything at, at all? Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Six of feathers. Okay, okay. We have a major arcana here. Okay, so first of all, we have the six of feathers. That's the six of swords. Okay. Um. Oh, wow. The high priestess is on the bottom. Oh, my God. And the hangman. Okay, that's it. So for the first week of October, anything else that we can be aware of, okay? So Six of Swords is moving out of troubled times, troubled waters, uh, challenges, uh, moving around obstacles to more calmer ground, okay? And then we have the star card here. That's Aquarius energy. It's a number 17 of the major arcanas. Um, this is healing. This is vulnerability. This is growth. This is channeling universal energies, universal knowledges from the stars. It's about healing. Um, there's a spider web here. Okay. And then we have the high priestess, which is a number two of the major arcanas. The high priestess is very psychic, very, very intuitive. She, um, holds esoteric knowledge, uh, knowledge from other realms, other lifetimes, very, very aligned and connected to that. Um, usually keeps that knowledge and information to herself, but she holds secrets and knowledge and the keys. And now we have the hangman, another major arcana. So, which is the number 12 of the major arcanas. Um, that is getting a whole new perspective, looking at things completely differently, okay? It is, um, Limbo stagnant mode, limbo stagnant energy, which we were talking about, right? So there is slow movement here from any troubled challenges, difficulties. There's slow movement for healing and growth, okay, and expansion. Um, it is for us to gain higher perspectives, higher knowledge, our esoteric higher self wisdom, the wisdom we hold within. And it's about remembering this knowledge, not discovering it. It's about remembering it, rediscovering it. It's a time of stagnancy. Hmm. See, the Six of Swords is moving out of troubled, troubled waters. We did get the water a lot. It's, it's waves, it's crashing, it's crazy, it's stormy, right? And it's moving to a more solid ground, land. We were talking about that in the general energetic messages. The star card, Aquarius energy is air. Feathers, swords is air. Now we have... The high priestess is water, Cancer by Scorpio. Okay, you know what? Let's read these out of the guidebook. It's so good. 
It is so good. We also have an owl here in the Six of Swords. First week of October. Where is the... Oh, here we go. Perfect. Six of Air, Six of Feathers, Six of Swords. Let yourself ride freely through your transformative dreams. Allow their messages to guide you through the dark, for you are ready to move on. In this moment, you begin to realize that you were always born to fly through a world of your own design. Know that every leap of faith is a form of flight. With faith as your companion, your consciousness expands. Star card and the high priestess. Yeah. And to gain better perspectives, newer perspectives with the hangman. Exactly. This is what the process is going to be. Um... Understand that you are transitioning to a new, more incandescent version of yourself, one elevated in the belief that the universe is here to support you. Absolutely with the star card. Yes, help will always be there if you are willing to accept it. Uh, for you are more than worthy. Listen to the whispers on the wind that softly speak. You are as brilliant. Br you are as brilliant as the stars. The star card is next. Air, the east, owl, and starlight. Okay, so there's that. Exactly. This is for us to acknowledge, understand, take that opportunity to unlock, to, to grab the book, grab the key, grab the, the secrets, grab the documents. It's all there. All the information is there. All the tools are there already. Um, it's up to us to understand, acknowledge it, okay, believe it. So now let's read the star card. The healing waters of the star return you back to yourself in the cosmic web of life. You have made your way through the bind and the burn. You have bathed in the sacred waters of your own receptivity, that infinite ocean of love from which we all emerge and to which we all return. Six of swords, yeah. Through your boundless courage... You have found enough trust to open yourself to the unknown and have finally realized that being vulnerable is the greatest of strengths. Vulnerability requires you to have faith in yourself and in this journey you are on with no expectations, only a deep conviction that you are here to serve as a vessel for love. Take this time to care for your body, your mind, and your spirit through the healing practice of medica meditation, uh, breath work, and sound sacred sound. Having freed yourself from any inherited traumas, you can now move forward, transformed, eager to share your gifts with the world. Hold on to the inner strength that has navigated the progress of your metamorphosis. Recognize that you have come to this moment through your own volition. Rise up refreshed and ready to begin anew. Let the wild joy within you light your way. Air the east, Aquarius, aquamarine. Interesting. Heart chakra, it says frog, water, web, and starlight. Huh. So, um, this is from the stagnancy that we've been in before, um, the obstacles we had to work through, the challenges we had to move through and deal with, um, this has all brought knowledge, um, transcendence, vulnerability with the universe, divine source, like creator, um, learning. Okay, that's what it's all brought. This is the first week of October. This is great. This is so good. Okay, so now let's read the High Priestess. And then uh, we'll do the, it's called the Oracle in this tarot. So the Sacred Web Tarot says, The Oracle is the keeper of sacred mysteries that exist beyond language, that live at the source of our collective wisdom. The Oracle is here to teach you to have reverence for all things and all beings. In reverence, you can begin to recognize that you are always in the presence of the sacred. The oracle guards the gateway to this understanding, for it knows that the sacred dwells within. Rest easy in their presence and their willingness to protect this ancient truth. Wow. Take heed of their encouragement to trust in your intuition and your dreams. For when you tune into this divine space of inner knowing, you cultivate your own wisdom and deep peace. Know that the oracle is full of love for you, the muddied waters, and the glowing lotus parts of you. Let the oracle be your healing guide as you journey through the in integral moments of your human experience. May they help shep shepherd you through the darkness and into the light. Water, the west, the moon, half lotus pose, the sacral chakra, and peacock and lotus. Wow. Exactly. Okay. Last one, and then we're going to move on to the... A week 
we're we're gonna move on to mid October, okay? So this isn't gonna be super super long. We're already at forty minutes, so <laughs> okay, okay. This is called reflection. This is a time of reflecting. Oh my gosh, all the healing we've done as well, and the knowledge we've gained. So be still, tune in as you turn into the sacred space within. Consider how your interior self, the perfect wholeness of you, aligns with how you move through the world. In what ways do you feel pulled from your center? How might your perspective be clouded? Your Oh my gosh, what was I talking about? The clouded mindedness, right? Feeling like we're just up in the clouds, um, not all there, kind of like uh, just cloudy, okay? All right, so in what ways do you feel pulled from your center? How might your perspective be clouded? Your sense of self turned on its head. Wow. It is time to think about what serves to lift you up and what seeks to drag you down. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Through a reflection, you can release any preconception of how you are supposed to be and begin to honor who you actually are. Yes. When you turn away from judgment and acknowledge how you might be in pain, how you might have caused pain, you can you can know yourself more completely. Through a confluence of introspection and compassion, you find more self-acceptance, which in turn makes space for transformative healing. <laughs> in the deep waters of emotion, be present to your grief and to your growth. Find consideration for all that arises. Listen for the echo of yourself as you float in a boundless ocean of love. Water, the West, Neptune, Sacral Chakra, Octopus, and Water. Oh my gosh! Yes! And it says Pearl, Standing Forward, Ben Pose. And it says Consideration. Awesome. Okay, okay. So, really, really good. All right. Now we're going to move on to the Unveiling the Golden Age Tarot. And we're going to move on to the uh, mid October. Um, and then we'll do the end. So. All right, divine source, light creator, guides of love, not only. So in our personal lives, what can we expect for about mid-October 2023? What can we expect? Okay, okay, okay. Oh my gosh, we got garden. Wow, it is so much about... Um, it's up to us as individuals to harvest the fruit from the seeds we have planted, okay? Um, card number 72. Okay, so that adds up to number nine, which is the ninth house. It's ruled by Sagittarius. It's faith, spirituality, trust, higher learning, higher education. It says nine of earth guardians. This is the nine of pentacles. This is bearing the fruit. It is harvesting the fruit. Um, <clears throat> it is recognizing all of the hard work you've done and the harvest is here. You're just about to pick all the fruit, okay? So that's the dreams, that's the achievements, that's the accomplishments, right? Oh, she's wearing a tiara crown. Um, nine of Pentacles can be very independent energy, independency. Oh, I do wanna read it. I do wanna read it. So this is personal lives, okay? All right, you have worked hard and can now enjoy the fruits of your labors. This card is about acknowledging your achievements. You have worked hard to get to this point because in the springtime, we plant the seeds. Throughout the summer, you water, you you till the soil, you, you fertilize. And then at this time of the harvest season, fall, you harvest all the fruit. Exactly on point. Okay. All right. You have been tending your inner and outer garden. Now, as you look around, you see the fruits and blooms of your labor. This card indicates that well-deserved success is earned through your efforts. Allow yourself time to relax and enjoy some luxuries. Often when we work hard to achieve something, the goal, the goal posts can keep moving or there are continuously bigger projects to accomplish. This seemingly endless momentum of doing can become tiresome and our enjoyment can get depleted. We may find ourselves stuck obsessing over the idea of the future we are moving toward. Wow. Okay. It is important to pause between endeavors, even if it is just a day or an afternoon of doing something nice for yourself. 
Allow yourself to reset before shifting your focus from one set of energies to the next. This card signifies being in harmony with nature, working in alignment with it, and being aware of the environment around you. It is a good idea to take your reset time in nature if you can. not If you are not already taking the environmental impacts of your projects into account, this card encourages you to consider how you can make your next chapter of accomplishments more eco-friendly. So you might also want to incorporate nature's nourishing energy into your personal life by weaving it into your day before or after work. Weaving, it reminds me of the web, the sacred web of life that you've been weaving. Awesome. This card also inspires you to consider your work-life balance. Sometimes there are stints where we do have to focus still it Still, it is vital to be aware of our families and other priorities outside of work. Furthermore, what is the point of all this work if you don't get to stand back and enjoy the results of your efforts? This card reminds you of your self-worth. Permit yourself a moment of appreciation. Enjoy. A lot of the same messages. A lot of the same messages. This is our personal lives, okay? Um, our inner world. Also, um, our like daily routines, what we've been working on and the projects we've started, the new things we've begun. Okay. All right. Awesome. Let's do an Oracle. Okay. Let's see. Um, let's do the conscious spirit Oracle. And yeah. What do we need to be conscious consciously aware of for mid October, 2023? What do we need to be consciously aware of mid-October 2023? Car oh my gosh, release. Car number 28. 28 adds up to a number 10. 10 is cycles, things ending for new beginnings. Okay, fulfillments is successes. Okay, uh, release. So it says I release that which, no what, sorry. I release that which does not serve my higher purpose with gratitude and love. I feel like a lot of us are going to let go of things, um, leave some things, situations, maybe even relationships behind that, you know, really deep down is not what you want for your future. Um, not for your highest good. Um, and things like that, right? for a comfortable life, uh, what you want to, mm, what you want your life to be. Okay. So let's read that. Wow. Okay. Still focused on mid October of our personal lives. So to connect to spirit and raise your energy, we talked about that in the general energetic messages to release all physical, emotional, and mental blockages that hold you back from reaching your full potential. People, objects, emotions, and experiences, come into your life in order for you to learn from them. Exactly. But not all are meant to stay. Yes. Release these with love and gratitude and ask Archangel Michael and Archangel Raphael to cut and heal the cords attaching you to this baggage. We talked about the drama as well, right? In the general messages. That's crazy. This unwanted clutter holds stagnant energy stagnancy okay with the hangman and it says which ties you to the past um preventing you from fully experiencing the present and moving forward once you have released a clutter your life will open up to new opportunities and abundance on all levels yeah right <laughs> this card is also asking you to release your addiction to material goods wow by by being caught up in the trap of consumerism you waste time and energy on accumulating unimportant objects in your life that add no true value while at the same time contributing to the depletion and destruction of your home, Mother Earth. What the heck? Okay, a lot of us may feel the need to want to declutter, to reorganize, to fall clean. Not spring clean, fall clean. Okay, get rid of some things. Maybe have a yard sale before it gets super cold or um, DI some things like um, give some things away, you know, 
So a lot of us may feel the need to do that um, mid-October-ish, okay? All right, pretty cool. So now as a society, as humanity, are there anything or is there anything that we can be aware of that's going to be any kind of like shocking news um, to society? Is there going to be any kind of like shocking news to society in mid-October 2023? Okay, so we have card number 35, the Radiant Feminine, Priestess of Light Coats. That's the Queen of Wands, Fire Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. I feel like this is connected to the solar eclipse. Okay, October 14th-ish. I believe, um, that's about mid October. So the radiant feminine, uh, 35 is an eight. The eighth house is ruled by Scorpio. Um, the eighth house represents death, rebirth, changes, transformation, endings, and new beginnings, regeneration. And the queen of wands reclaims her power, um, takes her power back, gets recognition. She's in the spotlight. She's recognized, acknowledged. Okay. Um, stands in her own power um very action oriented she holds her own magic wand to make things happen so i feel like this is very connected to the solar eclipse well with this solar eclipse society may stand up to reclaim their power back from the rulers. Is this what that means? Here, I'll show you it first. Is this mid-October? People, society. Let's say society. Reclaiming their power back and standing up to reclaim their power back. Is that what that means? Is that what that means? What? Is mid-October the solar eclipse? Let's ask that first. A lot to do with solar eclipse. Yes. Justice. Okay. That is a big yes. That is Libra energy. Okay. And uh, the solar eclipse is going to be happening in Libra season. Or we are in Libra season. It's still going to be in Libra season. It's card number 11. 11 is justice. It is standing up and reclaiming our power back for justice and truth, authenticity, balance, yin yang, um, justice. Okay. And it says alignment of the heart. This is absolute truth, clarity about alignment, about balance. This is about truth. Okay. And it's about multiple things. Not just one thing. It's multiple things that we need to reclaim our power back with. See all the bubbles of different uh, landscapes? And this is not just one place or one country, right? This is the global. This is global. This is reclaiming our power back. Wow. So, um, why? Why are we going to feel the need to reclaim our power back? around the solar eclipse. Why are we gonna feel the need to reclaim our power back around the solar eclipse mid-October 2023? Wow, seven of cups. We got that before. It's a card number 42, labyrinth. Well, 42 is a six. Sixth house is really Virgo. Sixth house is the body, health, wellness, daily routines, boundaries, organization. Hmm. Very interesting, right? Our health, our body, it can be our daily routines, going out and working, right? Labyrinth, that's confusion. So the seven of cups is the seven of portals in this card. Seven of cups is confusion. It's multiple things going on. Multiple uh, opportunities, multiple offers, multiple cups, multiple feelings and emotions, and it can cause confusion. It's about fantasy land. It is, it's, labyrinth really it's a maze keeping us confused okay not being authentic and true this is standing up reclaiming our power for truth justice okay and i feel like it has a lot to do with the sickness the little pinprick thing right is this a lot to do with the little pinprick does this have a lot to do with the little pinprick stuff? 
you know. We have another Major Arcana. This is um, a number three of the Major Arcanas. This is the Empress. This is Naga of the Golden Lotus. So the Empress, this can be Divine Feminine, a female influence, uh, Gaia, Mother Earth. Um, the Empress, ooh, um, the Empress is usually pregnant with ideas, plans, projects, pregnant with something. About to give birth to something new, a new life. You know, this reminds me of, um, oh my gosh, there's like all these little bubbles and they've got like little codes in them, light codes and stuff. Um, is this what's been in the pinpricks of what is being put into the body? Is this little pinpricks being put into the body? The Almost the pregnancy, right? Um, what is in the body? Is this the pinpricks into the body and the causes of it and what it causes? Is that what that means? Okay, what? All right, we have Mountain. So this is a card number 75. It says Paladin of Earth Guardian. So this is the Knight of Pentacles. Knights are the warriors, the battlers. They can be military. Um, so, okay. The Knight of Pentacles is a dark horse. The Knight of Pentacles always finishes the race. He's the slowest moving knight, but he's the one that always finishes the race. Nothing's gonna stand in his way. Nothing's gonna stop, block, keep him back. Ooh, he may leave clues behind. Oh, is this the little pinprick into the bodies and the effects coming from it later on? The moon, An, a major arcana, the moon. Okay, here's the mountain. We're still talking about mid-October 2023. Okay, all right, so the moon is Pisces energy. Um, it's number 18 of the major arcanas. Well, 18 is the nine, and the ninth house is faith, trust, spirituality, higher learning, higher perspectives, higher education. And it says the new earth transition. And um, the moon is whatever's been hidden, unknown, under the surface, unseen, manipulative, lies, deceit, deception, dreams, fantasy, portal doors, gateways. Oh my gosh. So is this... Oh boy, it can be maternal, water, feelings, intuition, emotions. Is this um, the manipulations, the lies, the deceits coming to light with the solar eclipse in October from the little pink pricks? Another major arcana. I think it has a lot to do um, with littles. Here's the moon. And this can be maternal. And we did get Empress, Mother Earth, Gaia, okay? Um, Divine Feminine. Now we have five lineage. This is the Hierophant Taurus card. Taurus rules the second house of anything earthly, the earthly plane, 3D reality. It says um, lineage. <clears throat> wow. It may be doing something with pregnancies is it doing something with pregnancies <gasps> another major arcana the emperor now that's divine masculine oh my gosh i didn't know it was gonna go here okay so the higher font is usually marriage contracts commitments conformity rules establishments it can be um keys knowledge information to society and community but look at the image. What the heck? 
and it's like um as above so below type of thing it's like it can be religious it can be spiritual church and then now we have it can be a spiritual religious leader or teacher and then now we have the emperor divine masculine number four sovereign cohesion divine masculine the emperor that is very good stability very very good structure um knows how to play the game king of all kings a boss a leader in control Hmm. I don't know. It's like a white lion tiger. I wonder if this has something to do with some kind of leader. Um, does this have something to do with some kind of leader that has something to do with the little pinpricks? Um... Rainbow Portal, Knight of Cups, card number 47. Well, the Knight of Cups is Cancer by Scorpio. And there's clouds here turning into a portal. Clouds, confusion. Rainbow flower, rainbow colors in the background. And now Rainbow Portal. What the heck? So the Knight of Cups wears his heart on his sleeve. Um, may spread love letters, love messages, um, feelings and emotions. And he may pour his feelings and emotions out there and get turned down a lot. So he doesn't always finish the race. He can be sensitive. Sensitive. Oof. What the crap? I am like... We may be finding out something about the effects with newborns on pregnant mothers that have gotten a little pinprick. Is that correct? Let's ask one more time. Is that correct for the uh, mid-October 2023? Six of light codes. That's a yes for me. Ooh, and catalyst. That's a double. Okay, I can't really show you the whole card on that one. I'll show you some of it. So now we have a, a number 27. And it says gold of the earth. This is six of light codes, the six of wands. This is success, victory, triumph, spotlight, recognition. It's going to be recognized. It's going to be brought to light. Solar eclipse. Something's going to be brought to light about that situation. Okay, so there's that. And see all the fruits? And they're all looking healthy. And they're good, right? Now we have the devil. This is number 15 of the major arcana's shadow clearing, the catalyst. So this can be anything that is toxic. Any strings attached, attachments, malevolence, violence, negativities, addictions, things like that. That toxicity. Very interesting. Something toxic about it. Okay. Wow. Um, okay, now I'm going to do an oracle. And... Um, I want this one, the spirit allies. And uh, I want to ask, well, what else can be, we be aware of for the for mid-October? Um, let's say after. Let's say after. Oh, and you know what I didn't say? We did see that moon card, remember? Um, well, we're going to have the solar eclipse and the new moon together pretty well the same day. Something about that. And the new moon is usually when you plant new seeds, new intentions, new things are starting. So I feel there's something new that's going to come out, some information about uh, that kind of thing, the situation with the pin, little pinprick, with the little tiny babies and pregnant mothers, possibly. Okay. Oh, boy. All right. So um, is there anything else we need to be aware of as a society, as humanity, for, for mid-October, after the new moon, after the solar eclipse? Opal. Well, how funny. Um, we have, uh, it's a number 20. 20 can be reduced to a two. The second house is Taurus ruled. 
and it's anything earthly plane, the 3D earth, 3D reality, um, materials, financials, um, opal, more rainbow stuff here. Rainbow reminds, reminds me of alignment or different things being lit up. Weird. Okay, 20. Too far. Let's read that. Anything else after the solar eclipse new moon, okay? What I give to the universe is sent back to me. An embodiment of magic, opal glistens like a prism. A rainbow of colors can be seen in the stone, known for helping to create balance and regulate emotions. Opal is a stone of amplification, meaning that what is presented to the stone is heightened and then sent back to the user. What? You are being called to manifest and send out positivity to all that surrounds you. In other words, give and you shall receive. Focus on raising your vibration and sharing your light and positivity with others. Not only could you make someone's day a little brighter, but you will be encouraging the same types of energy to come back to you. What you focus your attention on is what you draw into your life. So focus on what your soul craves. Journal prompt, what one small step can I take today to raise my vibration? Okay, well, hmm. We may be recognizing and seeing different different things we would be able to do to be able to, different things we will be able to recognize that we can do to pull in accomplishments and achievements and um recognizing all the abundance that surrounds us in many 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 different ways not just material not just financial okay all right um so now oops rose quartz just fell rose quartz interesting unconditional love self-love Is there going to be anything else that's going to be exposed in mid-October 2023? Is there anything else that's going to be exposed to society, to community, to humanity in mid-October 2023? Is there going to be anything else exposed? Yep, the magician. That's a yes. And I already seen that before. I was able to even finish the question. One, it's a one of the major arcana. That's a yes. It says transformation through illumination. Well, it does remind me of this solar eclipse. It's a different light of things. And um, the magician, it's, look at the people surrounding. It, this is humanity, right? This is all of us, okay? Um, this is magic, manifesting, creating, mastering things, master alchemists. There's some lightning here. There's a swirl of clouds, some stars. That does look like the sun behind her. And then almost like another sun that's got these uh, um, energetic, oh, what are they called? Not ley lines. Oh, are they ley lines? See that? Interesting. What is it going to be? What's it going to be with? What's this going to be with? What is going to be exposed to us all as a humanity? In mid-October. What is this? What is this? Card number 60. Okay, health again. Oh my gosh, because 60 can be reduced to a six. Sixth house, Virgo ruled. It is the health, the body, wellness, daily routines, boundaries, and organization. It says heartfelt communication. Initiative activation. So this is the page of swords. Page of Swords can be um, tiptoeing to more solid ground, very, very strategic movement to a sol solid ground with ideas, light bulb moments, information, and knowledge. Books, right? It can be spying, stalking, and watching as well.
Okay. This reminds me of light bulb moments. This is gaining information through possible communication. Heartfelt, sorry, heartful communication. And the art in it is capitalized. A-R-T, A-R-T. What does A-R-T stand for? Art, art, A-R-T. What is it gonna be with? I think it's still something to do with the body, the health. Is it still something to do with the body, with the health of people, even in mid-October 2023? Is it still going to be focused on health, the body? Ooh. Okay, now we have card number 40. Well, 40 can be reduced to a four. Um, fourth house in astrology is ruled by cancer and the fourth house represents home, family, structure, stability, solid foundation. It says crystalline staircase. Five of portals, the five of cups. This is my portal vortex card. This is also any sorrow, any loss, any regret, anything feeling drained, something draining something going down the drain is what they've told us going down the drain is whatever they've told us about our body the little pinprick stuff is it all going down the drain is that what that means mm -mm. is that what that means oh, goodness Okay, I might need um, another deck. Let's see, um, let's just do the Sacred Web Tarot again. Is it whatever they've told us about our body, our health, and the little pinpricks and stuff like that going down the drain? We have a five of feathers. That's a five of swords. Five is changes and transformations and challenges. Five of swords though. Five of swords is a uh, defeat. Winning at all cost. Alienating those around them. Blocking others out to win. It can be blocking others opinions out. Um, going your own way. And despite what anybody else believes and thinks. Is this is this people slowly strategically moving to more solid ground away from away from the opinions um, away from society's beliefs and views? of what we should be doing and how we should be doing it with the pinprick in the body and the health and stuff. Is that what that means? Is this people going their own way? Okay, we have the hermit. We have Virgo energy. Virgo rules the sixth house of the health, the wellness, the body daily routines, boundaries, and organization. I really do think so. I really do. Um, now we have the Hermit. So this is the Hermit card, Virgo energy. This is actually introspection, <laughs> reflection, doing your inner work. Actually, um, old soul, hidden knowledge, um, inner light, hidden, hidden, hidden light, hidden knowledge. Um, this is lighting the dark path ahead. It does remind me of light bulb moments. 
I feel like whatever information is going to be coming out, people are going to go their own way. They're going to be like, okay, I am not listening to what they freaking tell me anymore because it's all BS. Really interesting. And the elephant, elephant wisdom, they're very wise and very grounded. Hmm. Okay. All right. So what else can we expect for the, the mid middle of October 23. What can we expect? What else? What's going to come to light? What else is going to, what else are we going to see? What else are we going to see in mid October, 2023? What else are we going to see in 2023 mid October? Source of earth. That is the king, right? No. Queen? This is the queen of earth, the queen of pentacles. Um, Taurus Virgo Capricorn, earth energy here. So the, she is very, very grounded. She's very, very uh, comfortable and secure. She has a security blanket and protection, especially in a material financial world or even just her 3D reality, her stability foundation. She's built very strong. Also, she turns down like low ball type offers for herself and others. It's a tree and it's connected to some like green water pouring out of the hand. Very interesting. Let's find earth. Pentacles. Oh, source of earth. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, I got that right. Queen of Pentacles. Yes. The source of earth holds the lifeblood of the cosmos in their loving hand. They ask you to contemplate the relationship between the material and the spiritual. They want you to respect that your body holds. Are you kidding? Uh, an intelligence within that will never lie to you. What? The body reveals whether you are living from your soul center or from a diminished place of anxiety and fear. The source of earth wants you to recognize that when you nurture the physical aspects of your life, you are taking care of your soul's container. They offer this encouragement. Find respect for your body, your home, this earth, so that you may be healed and bring that restorative energy to others in need. Wow. The source of earth reminds you that your embodiment is holy, that we are all one, unified, and whole under the light of the stars and through the light that each of us brings to the world. It says respect. Earth, the north, water and earth, hand, tree, and cosmic sky. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Strange. That is so interesting. It's so freaking focused on the body. Okay. Well, let's move on. Okay. So, um, let's see. Yeah, let's do this. What? These two. Oh boy. Um, and then we need to move on to more of the end of October. Let's do the spirit song. Tarot. And then we'll do some more oracle. Okay, divine source light creator and guide of love and light only. So now, with us focusing on more of the end of October 2023, what can we expect in our individual lives? Seven of Cups. This is a lot of the month. This is a lot of October. There's going to be a lot of confusion. Cups, feelings, and emotions. Cancer Price Scorpio. It says choice and ambition. Seven of Cups is that fantasy land, fantasy world, hidden in clouds. It's also multiple things going on. Multiple things, multiple opportunities, multiple offers, multiple feelings. Um, and it can cause confusion. I cannot believe we got this card again. Wow. 
So, choice and ambitions. Hmm. Lobster with the claws. Why are things still going to be so confusing in our individual lives for October? We got the freaking star. And then we have the world. What the heck? The star card. Again, this is Aquarius energy. Number 17 of the major arcanas. It says peace and healing. This is a lot to do with our healing. Um, It's how we're healing. Um, Vulnerability. It's about the vulnerability as well. This reminds me of Littles. Okay, it's about them. Okay, they're going to try to keep us con confused still. Um, the star card, it's that channeling universal knowledges, uh, knowledge, uh, energies, universe, um, <sighs> vulnerability, healing, growth, and expansion. Um, and then we have the world, a number 21 of the major arcanas. So that says fulfillment and celebration. The world can literally be the world. Earth. Our world. Healing of the world. It's part of the healing process. I feel like it's part of the healing to ascend, to move on, to heal and grow. It's part of healing. Okay. It's for us to... The confusion is part of it all. It's part of us to grow. It's part of us to learn from it. Okay. So let's um, pull an oracle. So here's a star. Peace and healing, it says. Aquarius energy. Also, 17 is an 8. The 8th house is ruled by Scorpio, right? And the 8th house um, is death, rebirth changes cycles transitions metamorphosis regeneration okay for the world also 21 can be a three the third house in astrology is ruled by gemini the third house is communication transportation journey um it can be technology it can be collaboration working together let's pull from the law of positivism oracle okay still focused on the end ending time of october 2023. Where is it? Just gotta find it now. There it is. Okay. Huh. It's so interesting because I asked about our individual lives, you know, and it's gonna be more entwined with um, the not just our individual lives it's going to be this is more uh, than that it's more than that hmm, okay all right what else do we need to know about this this healing this growth and expansion of the world of us being all part of this for the in the end ending part of october 2023 card number six healing our body heck in the world six virgo it is the body health wellness daily routines boundaries and organization are you flipping kidding me and it says i bless my body with nourishing foods ah. oh my gosh and it's on page 42 that's a six Right? And then it ends on page 43, which is a number seven. Seven, balance, partnerships, relationships. Let's read this. I bless my body with nourishing foods. Food is a gift, an offering, and nourishment is a blessing. What, when, and how we eat affect us. And we must be conscious of it all. 
it on all these levels. Your body is your temple, your altar, and what you give to it is an offering, a gift, and an act of gratitude. Eating isn't only a survival instinct. It is an active embodiment of the earth's cycles and elements. It is a living, breathing process of transformation with our bodies. Eating has now become a lifestyle and a habit. We no longer have ceremonies and rituals around food and eating and are not always aware of the impact that unconscious eating has on our body's DNA and vitality. What we eat makes up our body and either nourishes or depletes our energy. Unprocessed foods direct from Mother Earth are natural for the body to assimilate. Now is the time to be more loving and kinder to yourself with your diet and nourishment. Creating healthy eating habits. Take time to understand your body's constitution and what it needs to be get balanced. Ancient practices like traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, and Ayurveda are a great way to start. Ask yourself how you can give yourself more nourishing foods. Create time and space for, your, for growing, buying, preparing, and cooking your food. Create a sacred time and space for all of your meals. When craving something that won't serve your body, ask what you want from yourself and life and what it is you are trying to replace with food. Know that you are worthy of the nourishment from Mother Earth and accept all of her gifts and medicines. And it says fruit. Connecting with Mother Earth and natural, unprocessed nourishment and food. Are we going to find out something as a whole, as a humanity, about our food? Oh my gosh, is something going on? And also, they talked about Chinese medicine. Sorry, but I don't know about the other countries, but the United States, um, they're starting to learn that a lot of our food is coming in from there. Is there gonna be something found out about that specific situation of where food is coming from? Um, is that, is that what that means? Queen of Feathers, the Queen of Swords. That is a yes for me. It says perception and truth. And it's about. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What was all that blamed on? And what part of the world? That's the Chinese medicine. So talking about the body we we're talking about the little pinprick and now we have a bat how funny is that that's wild this is truth so the queen of swords is aquarius gemini libra energy and she gains she goes and flies high high above to gain higher perspectives higher truths higher knowledge okay um to bring in clarity truth justice and balance she may protect her feelings and emotions, her cup, but she will, she stands for truth, justice, and clarity. There's going to be something up this month, October, about all of that, okay? All right, all right. Um, Holy cow, what is going to come of that then? What's going to come of that when that's found out? I pray I'm right, my gosh. What? It's not even me. It's me interpreting the cards, right? And this is what everything look like looks like right now. Um, from right now, what it's going to look like, like the potential, right? We have the magician. It can. It's a crow. It's a raven. They are messengers. And um, we used the messenger oracle earlier. Now I have the other deck by her called the seeker oracle. So this um, is the magician Aquarius Gemini Libra energy. It says willpower and creation. This is master alchemist alchemizing energies, um, having all the tools you need to create, to create whatever you desire. Um, whew, it's a magician magic bird can be a new beginning, new energies, what a trip. Okay, let's pull from the secret oracle now. I need to pull that out first. Sorry. And we're still focusing on the end, the ending part of October 2023. So now the secret oracle, okay? So what it is, or what is it uh, that we are gonna see at the end of October 2023? What are we gonna see? Can we get confirmation? 
a choice to make. There's going to be a choice to make. There's going to be a choice. We're all going to be given a choice. There's fire here in the ball of fire. Hmm. Still kind of reminds me of, um, the solar eclipse. And we're going to have a lunar eclipse later on, right? But, okay, let's read this. Um, a choice to make. It starts on page 16. Well, add those numbers up. You get a seven. Hmm. Seventh house, the, the scales. Hmm. Okay, let's read this. Another dragon, too. Unlike other mammals who are driven by instinct, we humans have the freedom to choose how we live our lives. Our life's journey is governed by choice, even when we choose not to act or someone else makes a choice for us. Stare into the flame and ask yourself, what do I want to be? If we were to stop and count how many choices we are faced with during a single day, we would be counting from the moment we wake, we wake to the moment we sleep. With that in mind, ask yourself, how many unconscious choices do you make and how many are made with intent? Do you use your power, ugh, do you use your power wisely? Do you make considered, educated, empowered choices? The path a seeker walks is paved with choices. Like stepping stones, every choice marks a moment that moved us forward. Wow. Every choice we make in the present moves us along our path to our final destination. Multiple options create a forked path and a more complicated decision to make. Every choice you make will change your life in sometimes subtle and imperceptible ways, and other times in a life-changing way. Do you believe that you have the power to steer your life in a direction of your choosing? Understand that to decide what you, that you do not is still a choice. Yes, there will always be moments when another person's choice affects us in an unexpected and unanticipated manner. In those moments, we can feel powerless. However, while we may not have the power to change our circumstances, we do have a choice in how we react and respond. You have a choice to make. You, will you take ownership of that flame, the power to govern your life and determine how you live it? Will you use this power to make choices that will improve your life? And it ends on page 17, which is an eight. Remember, 17, Major Canon and Tarot is a star card, Aquarius energy, healing, expansion, and growth. Now, this reminds me of how government tells us how to live, what to do, what to put in our body, right? How to live our life. And I feel like something's going to be said, brought up, something's going to happen, um, be communicated to us as a whole. And it's going to be up to us to go along with that, to make a decision right? To go along with it or choose our own path, right? We are almost done. The Muse Tarot. Is that correct? Is something going to potentially, right? Happen by the end of October, 2023 about our body, our health, the way we live our life. Um, daily routines, our boundaries, to where it's going to give us a choice to make if we are going to do what we're told or we're going to choose our own path. We have the fool. This is where the major arcana start, where the tarot starts, is the zero. This is Aquarius, Gemini, Libra energy. This is a leap of faith, trusting the fall. Um, this is having full, complete faith, surrender. This is also spontaneous, adventurous, um, taking a leap of faith. It can be a fool, um, but it's like, uh, very light spirited. And then death. Death is Scorpio energy. This is a number 13 of the major arcanas. So it's either to be silent. Okay. Not say anything. Keep doing what you're told. Keep getting caught in the web or jumping off just trusting the universe going your own way okay so this is the scorpio energy that rules the eighth house of death rebirth changes transformation endings and new beginnings okay all right i think i'm about done let's pull a couple more um oracle um if anything else comes up i'll ask but i think we've covered it so far um pretty dang good so let's do the untamed oh no My selenite with the kyanite and the lotus 
charm got caught on me and hit my uh, singing bowl. That is the singing bowl between the root chakra and the earth star chakra. Very grounding, very interesting. Okay, so untamed elemental oracle. Here we go. All right. Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Lonely Only. So what can we be aware of to protect ourselves, to protect our families? <sighs> right? What can we be aware of to be able to protect ourselves and to protect our loved ones, um, to keep moving forward? Thank you so much. Tree of Life, stay connected, be there for each other, stay grounded, stand your ground. Um... The tree of life is a connection to oneness. That's exactly what we were talking about before. That's wild. Let's find tree of life. I think it's over here. Yep, right here. Self-correct. It says, oh my gosh, and it's, it says earth. It's in the category of earth. And it's on page 35, another eight. Holy cow. Death rebirth. Wow. Now, tree of life. Holding the essential balance between earth and sky, tree of life forms a singular, ever growing veracity of interconnectedness. He is blessed by the multitude of nutrients drawn through his roots. Wow. And provides a strong and generous shelter of truth and perspective for all who seek refuge with him. He breathes and stands tall, offering a canopy of consciousness so that his initiate essentia will be reborn for all eternity. Tree of life offers the blessing of a supportive system so that any imbalance in your life may self-correct. The answers you seek are within you because you are the channel through which higher intelligence experiences itself. You are an emanation of your spirit's signature passed through a template of sacred geometry, the result of which is rare atomic form. Hmm. All that you desire to experience is available now. The liberation you strive for is already here. Spend time connecting with Tree of Life in your daily meditation, and every aspect of your world will begin to come into greater alignment with your own internal truths. Holy cow. Feeling supported by and connected to all of life, and it says rest in the awareness that you are perfectly supported to live your life. What the heck? That's crazy. All right. Um, let's pull maybe one last one from the Spirit Allies Oracle and call it good for the month of October 2023. All right. What's the last message that we can take with us for the month of October 2023? What is the last message? A lot to do with our body and our health, our daily routines. Holy cow. The, the, if we're going to keep following or we're going to pave our own path, right? All right. We have Durga and we got one more Aquarius. How many times are we going to get star Aquarius energy? And then number 17, are you kidding me? Okay, I'm done. I'm done. All right. So we first have a card number four. That four, the fourth house is ruled by cancer and the fourth house represents home, family, structure, stability, solid foundation. Okay. It's Durga. Now we have the Aquarius card, card number 59, Aquarius, the star card we kept getting and the star card in the tarot, um, is a number 17. I got to find it. And, um, yeah, the star card in the tarot is a number 17. Aquarius energy, peace and healing, growth, expansion, channeling, universal knowledge, and vulnerability. Okay. So we have Durga, card number four. Okay. We have Aquarius, card number 59. And check this out, card number 17, Labrador, 17. What the heck? All right. Four, we'll read first, Durga. And the affirmation first says, my energy is worth protecting. Okay. A deeply revered deity in Hinduism, Durga is referred to as the mother goddess. Her name can be translated to fort in relation to her highly protective nature. Durga is often associated with motherhood and is pictured with eight arms. We did get motherhood. 
child, uh, the little tinies and motherhood. We got that before, right? Wow. And then eight arms, eight again, eighth house, death rebirth, <laughs> that each holds a symbolic object. Okay. Your energy may be feeling drained or fragile <laughs> and it is important to protect it. Wow. The stories of Durga's fortifying nature are a reminder of how essential it is to remain steady in your boundaries. Are you freaking kidding me? Holy cow. This doesn't mean that you need to shut everyone out, but rather create conscious relationships with others who will help to lift you up. Yep. Determine what values are important to you and search for others who feel the same. Stay vigilant with others who cross your path to be sure that you don't energetically feed them more than you need to. <laughs> Feeding? Are you kidding me? What? Focus on shifting yourself into your ideal vibration and witness how you attract people who align with the aligned version of you. Journal prompt says, how can I energetically replenish myself? Okay, and then I just have to say that is on page 18. 18 reminds me of the moon card in the tarot. So moon is Pisces energy. It can be things that have been unseen, hidden, unknown. But it all eventually comes to light all of it okay so now let's go to 59 aquarius all right here we go it says i am unique it's on page 77 seven pals ruled by libra the scales relationships partnerships balance yin yang truth clarity okay standing out against the crowd it is hard to miss aquarius are we gonna follow the crowd are we going to follow what we're being told? Or are we going to pave our own freaking path? Whew! And stand together doing it though, right? Amazing. Okay. Their uniqueness speaks for itself. But there is always something interesting to learn from this air sign. The fine balance that they create between air and water is one that leaves them independent of their emotions and a seeker of their authentic path. Yep. Your journey in this lifetime is entirely your own. And while you may encounter others who have had similar experiences, no one else is living your life. Aquarius is here to remind you to rejoice in your individuality and the choices that you make. While some decisions may leave others confused, you know what is beneficial to you and your time here. The independent choices that you will make will lead you to a community that supports you wholeheartedly and wants what is best for you. Journal prompt says, what would I like to do in the next five years? What is holding me back? Are you kidding me? Wow. All right. Last one, card number 17, Labradorite. On page 32, 32 is a five. Five is changes and transformations and challenges. Okay, and so um, it says, I am open to great periods of transformation with shades of blue, green, and gold. Labradorite is a distinctive crystal that holds a strong connection to channeling your higher self. Caught in just the right light, the crystal's iridescence shines like no other. Hmm, interesting. Caught in the right light. We were getting the rainbows earlier. Okay, Labradorite is a stone of awakening. Yes, it is a call to your higher purpose. You can no longer put off your destiny in this lifetime. A stone of the new moon. The new moon coming up in October, there's also a solar eclipse. And then later on, it's a lunar eclipse. And then look what's next. So we have Labradorite, 17. Now we have 18, Moonstone. Talked about that moon. All right. Okay, it says... A stone of the new moon, Labradorite, symbolizes a period of new beginnings to come. Use this time to set intentions for where you'd like to see yourself and plan for the journey ahead. Call on your guides if you feel like you have questions unanswered so you can make a decision with all of the awareness you need. Now is not the time to rush. It is the time to recognize the transformation to come. <sighs> yeah, exactly. And to prepare yourself to welcome it with open arms. We just had Durga journal prompt says how can I prepare myself for change well 
that's exactly right. That is so all about this time of year, um, October season, fall time. Okay, well, that was it. I'm not going to do any more. I think that is perfectly exactly what we needed to hear for the month of October 2023. And we just should just shall see um, what is going to play out. And um, I'm very curious, right? But keep in mind that anything can change. Everybody has free will. So um, this is what everything looks like at this moment right now. I'm sure we'll see some things that kind of add up a little bit, you know, here and there. And uh, I mean, if you remember, if you see something and you remember the reading we did here today and you're like, oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. Um, please come back. Remember to come back and, and share that with me. I would so love to know. And if I remember, I will too. <laughs> and thank you guys so much for being here. Again, all for entertainment purposes only. But the truth is always stranger than fiction. And always have an open mind. Always ask questions. Be aware. Be mindful. And unconditional love and light. So be it. And I will see you guys in the next reading or video. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share.